produced water presents one of the biggest challenges of the oil and gas industry. With several tight regulations regarding the treatment, disposal, and reuse of produced water, dealing with produced water is a difficult and often costly venture. In this video, we will have a quick overview of how produced water treatment works. Produced water is the most common byproduct in oil and gas extraction fields. The pockets of oil and gas found deep within the earth are also filled with groundwater that mixes with valuable raw materials. The mixing of oil, gas, and water beneath the surface creates a slurry. When the oil and gas are pumped to the surface, the water must be separated first before the oil and gas can be further treated or sold. This water mixed with the oil and gas is known as produced water. Removing the produced water from the oil and gas isn't too difficult. However, the challenge comes when it's time to deal with the produced water. Regulations restrict oil and gas companies from discharging produced water just anywhere. Untreated produced water may still contain salt, oil and grease, naturally occurring radioactive materials, heavy metals, and dissolved organic compounds. All of these can be harmful to the environment and can pollute drinking water sources as well. That is why produced water must go through a treatment process before it can be discharged or reused. To fully remove all traces of oil, gas, and other materials, the typical treatment process of produced water goes through three stages. 1. Pre-treatment. 2. Main treatment. 3 polishing treatment, and sometimes, a fourth tertiary treatment is included. Pre-treatment is the first stage of treatment. This is where most of the oil and gas is separated from the water through heating, settling, chemical additives, and a few other methods. One of the most common processes in pre-treatment is dehydration. During dehydration, the slurry is pumped into a contactor tower. Here it comes into contact with triethylene glycol, or TEG which absorbs the water from the gas. The mixture of water and TEG then makes its way to a boiler. Since the boiling point of TEG is much higher than that of water, the fluid is heated just enough to evaporate the water, while the TEG remains as a liquid. The liquid TEG is then pumped back into the contactor tower, where it absorbs even more water from the gas while the water makes its way to the next stage of treatment. Despite the pre-treatment removing large amounts of oil, gas, and solids from the produced water, smaller particles may still exist. To remove these, the produced water then goes into the main treatment. Once again, there are several processes and equipment involved in the main treatment. One of these is the hydrocyclone. The produced water is injected into the hydrocyclone at high pressure. Because of the location of the inlet, and the shape of the hydrocyclone, the injected water then spins around the hydrocyclone casing. Because oil and water have different densities, they react differently inside the hydrocyclone. The spinning within the casing creates a vortex, where the lighter material, oil, rises to a discharge on top of the hydrocyclone. Meanwhile, the water discharges at the bottom of the hydrocyclone. Hydrocyclone separation is just one process in the main treatment. The produced water also often goes through API separators, skim tanks, centrifuges, and gas flotations. Produced water is considered industrial waste. This is why there are so many stages of treatment it must go through before it can be safely discharged or reused. During the polishing treatment, the produced water goes through numerous filters and membranes to remove almost all the remaining particles. Some treatment plants even include a tertiary treatment. This gets rid of even the finest materials that are still left within the water. By the time the water finishes this treatment, it is now pure enough to be disposed of safely, or reused for fracking. As you just saw, there is a bunch of different equipment used in the treatment of produced water. However, Perhaps one of the most vital of them all is the produced water pump. While it isn't the most glamorous, produced water pumps play the critical role of transferring the water from station to station. A pump like the API Maxim OH2 by Carver Pump is perfect for handling produced water. With flows up to 11,500 GPM and heads up to 720 feet, 
This single stage end suction pump is more than capable of taking produced water from one treatment station to the next one. However, for high pressure applications, you may need a multi stage ring section pump. Carver Pumps RS was built for this task. With flows up to 2000 GPM, heads up to 3400 feet, and pumping pressures up to 1500 PSIG. The RS is your best bet when it comes to high pressure jobs. In some instances, you may even use the RS for fracking or the reinjection of the produced water into the ground. Both the API Maxim OH2 and the RS were built by Carver Pump, a leading manufacturer of centrifugal pumps. Since 1938, Carver Pump has been building world-class centrifugal pumps for the most demanding engineering specifications and military standards. Headquartered in Muscatine, Iowa, all Carver Pump pumps are proudly American-engineered and manufactured. As one of the first pump companies to be certified by Intertech to conform to ISO 9001, 2015, the ultimate standard in the world, Carver Pump boasts outstanding quality, superior customer service, state-of-the-art research and development, and continuous improvement in everything they do. Whether your job is fueling cargo ships, supplying paint to an auto assembly line, or bringing water to the fountain in a city park, you can trust Carver Pump to get the job done.